Being so close to New York City, Connecticut is a hardy breeding ground for playwrights who want to test run their new works. This is great for me because I get to see new plays and musicals before they go forward to bigger and better things. The catch is, new works are just that. New. With all the flaws that come with a new project, and it's sometimes a bit of a task to see past these inherent flaws in a piece, to see the jewel that may be hidden within, waiting to come out. Welcome to episode 52 of One Man's Opinion, where I review professional theater across Connecticut and New York. Today I am reviewing the world premiere of Ileana Pipe's new play, Dreamhouse, directed by Lori Woolery, which has premiered at Long Wharf Theater, running through April 3rd. Dreamhouse has a lot going for it, but there are also elements that need better explaining or don't read well. Dreamhouse is a spiritual fantasy that follows two sisters, Yulia, or Julia, depending upon how her mood fits her in a moment of the play, played by Darlin Castillo, and Patricia, or Patricia, played by Renata Eastlick. Their mother has just died, and Patricia has surprised Julia by having their home featured on a Faustian home improvement reality show where the house is flipped and sold at a hopefully higher price, hosted by Tessa, played by Marianne McClellan, who is the devil analog here. Where Dreamhouse works is in its complex debate of gentrification in once working class Latinx communities. The setting isn't explicitly stated, but based on Stephanie Austin Cohen's scenic design, it appears to be somewhere in the southwest, Pipes is originally from Los Angeles, and she said in the show's program that she is writing from personal experience of gentrification in her neighborhood where she grew up, and her own family selling their home when she was 13, so L.A. isn't a bad place to view it from. The conflict predominantly rests between the two sisters, as Julia, who is a six months pregnant social studies teacher, doesn't want the home to be sold and honor her family's heritage, while Patricia, who is an accountant who put her career on hold to take care of their dying mother, is in favor of the sale and sees it as a way to advance economically. The conflict between the two is rich, passionate, and genuine. What makes the play more compelling, if not always better, is that Dreamhouse has a lot of spiritual, metaphysical, and surreal elements that come into play. Multiple times throughout the show, the two sisters are able to freeze time and have a time-out discussion between each other. About midway through the play, the house becomes its own supernatural character, bleeding out its history to the characters. There is a strong Faustian theme running through the play, especially involving Patricia and Tessa. There is a late scene where Tessa attempts Patricia to see exactly how far she will go to get what she wants. All of this works to different degrees. The supernatural elements I find compelling and exciting, especially involving the house. The power of the sisters to stop time and speak with each other is an intriguing idea and works. Though once Tessa starts interjecting herself, it starts to unintentionally parody itself. I think the Faustian scene between Patricia and Tessa is hitting the nail a little too hard on the head. I prefer it to read more in subtext in the story proper than have it, than having it sp- spelled out so blatantly. There's a preceding scene that is similar between Yulia and Tessa, where Tessa seeks out Yulia's motivations and outs her deceptions. That one doesn't feel as egregious as the one with Patricia. My initial problem, though, is at the start of the play. Yulia doesn't want to sell the house and doesn't want to be on this reality show. Conceptually, the premise then doesn't work, because a reality show like this can't film without consent from both the sisters, and it would never get off the ground. The metaphorical deal with the devil never actually happens, at least not on Yulia's part, so thus the rest of the story can't happen. Your own suspension of disbelief will determine whether or not you will be able to go forward with the play's concept. I think an additional scene of Yulia willing to go forward, and if we want to lean in on the Faustian theme, a contract signing scene would have added a lot to it. There are good, compelling, and daring elements to Dreamhouse. It's got a great concept, but it comes down to whether or not you're willing to accept the leaps that Pipes wants you to go on along the way to enjoy it. The three actresses are good, Castillo and Eastlick, 
uh, didn't seem to bring themselves fully into character until McClellan arrived, and McClellan's outlandish over-the-top performance as Tessa seemed to motivate the other two, and uh, once all three of them were on the stage, the show really started to move along and become electric. Dreamhouse isn't going to be for everyone. Its ethereal and spiritual elements may be confusing and perturbing for some, but underneath the more extreme elements, there is a sensitive story of two sisters rediscovering each other, who they are, where they come from, and what is important. And that is one man's opinion of Dreamhouse at Long Wharf Theater through April 3rd. Please leave your opinion in the comments below. If you're interested in tickets, I'll leave a link in the description. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be the first to see my next review. The next show I'll be reviewing is Buddy, the Buddy Holly story at Music Theater of Connecticut. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you at the theater.